Hey guys, I am Shaft, you're watching a Polygon Gaming Daily Cast. Here on the top left hand side of Odyssey Ladder Edition in the red Terran Trunks, it's Cascade Gaming's Cause. And on the bottom right hand side of that map, he is a very aggressive type player. He uses roaches a lot at least, which kind of tend to be better early game. It's none other than Dead Pixels Namshar. Speaking of aggression, he did go for a pull first and a gas. He's got uh, the second hatchery and then immediately got a roach warren. So I don't know how uh, how often he uses super aggressive builds, but this is definitely going to be one of them. Now, um, one thing that is very characteristic of Namshar style is a heavy emphasis on roaches and this actually plays out very well right now because mech is seemingly getting a lot more popular in the um, present day now we've got the Reaper coming out this is pretty standard fare but this Reaper is going to be very very surprised he's already anticipating like this fast hatch build and you know you can even see where he's dropping this KD a charge or at least considering it. And now he sees that that creep spread was not where it should have been for a fast hatch and immediately gets back because he knows. He already knows this is coming. Now these lings, super aggressive, but the lings aren't what's most threatening here. Um, it sure it delays the uh, the fast expand a little bit from Kaz, but uh, not really the big deal. Kaz is going to want information, but he does not know roaches are coming. He has no information about the roaches whatsoever. All he's seen is the creep spread. Now, we've got this Ling still getting a little bit harassed, but the Reaper is going to finish him off. The question is, will the SCV die first? And it looks like the Ling is going to explode all over. And this is a great Overlord, considering the fact that Namshar is being super aggressive. It's going to allow him to uh, see any kind of positioning going around in this area here. And this is really where the early game conflicts happen in this matchup, on this map. And looks like we're going to be seeing some Ravagers morphed in uh, a little early. Typically, uh, players wait until their roaches are bruised. But this means he is going to be all about knocking down some walls. We'll see if this is a most effective use of this strategy. I just, I, I've never had any success with this early game kind of shenaniganry. All right, so some great uh, drops there um, on this tech lab. By hitting the tech lab, he's going to cancel invisibility. But he's only doing it, uh, you know with like one thing it's not his main focus he does manage to get into the main and he's uh knocking these hellions back kills off another one and again the drops looks like he's gonna kill that yep boom denied the banshee cloaking field and that's going to make him a lot safer at home of course the banshee is on the field which means this attack is going to be over but just killing that does put him in a significant advantage he's killed about eight workers now nine workers he's got 35 of his own so nearly double the economy right now as well as uh should be thinking about taking a third base where's his opponent <laughs> just finished that all right so this attack has been cleaned up now cause not in the best spot he is going to want to be aggressive but he doesn't have that much to be aggressive with the liberator going to be a good choice uh since you know the banshee did kind of uh the cloak portion got stopped we are going to see spore crawlers go up in mineral lines so we'll see if um cause is able to do any uh any any like economic damage what he should be able to do though is kill off this hatchery and stop any kind of expansions um because you know queens spores feels like namshar's got the defense he wants taking a little while to wall that off and looks like this banshee gonna be coming in and uh no he's not he's not gonna be happy just killing that he wants to do some raw damage but he has to know these four crawlers are gonna be in position the cloak was obvious yeah go ahead and get back of course overseer morphing already and that means um the queens are gonna be able to knock the banshee back unfortunately all right so we've got a infestation pit about halfway done now for Namshar, that's going to mean a very fast hive. So he's not worried so much about the third and fourth base economy so much as he is getting some vipers out on the field. And that's uh, pretty typical when you're up against mech play. So it seems like he's identified that this is indeed going to be mech from our, uh, our turn buddy here. 
Mech is very popular. I think um, on this map in particular because of how hard it is to hold a third. Like this third, wide open, got a little uh, siege path here. Um, just And then, you know, this area that we talked about just a moment ago. And then, of course, all the different entrances to this base as well. Of course, the drops, not really that important against Zerg. So you see this taken as a third base, but it's still a very hard third base to defend. So Mech definitely giving you the ability to siege and fortify a position. So I think that's where that is. Now, we've got a little bit of uh, Cyclone Hellbat stuff here, but... I don't think it's that important. The third base, not not that, like, Namshar doesn't care about that. It's just there, you know, to, to buy him time, to, in case his opponent doesn't attack him type thing. But his main crooks is this, this hive tech that he's going for. And, uh, yeah, looks like this is going to be a pretty painful attack. I don't know if he'll be able to quite handle this, but we'll find out. Queens are taking a beating. There's not that much energy for transfuse. There should be like one transfuse. There it goes. Boom. And the frontline hellbats have been eliminated. Lings uh, would be an option now, but I think uh, I think in this case Namshar is going to continue pumping out the roaches and just overwhelm the cyclones, despite the cyclones being slightly more cost effective uh, against the roaches than they um, than necessary. Okay, cool. So the hellbats still trying to kill off some of the economy, but a little bit too little, too late. And this is looking to be a pretty even game as far as workers are concerned. Neither player having a third base, which does put a slight advantage now on our cause. On cause, yeah. Uh, so upgrades coming now for both players. We're just now getting link speed started. We're getting the plus one ground carapace, plus two missile attacks. And only one upgrade, the fir very first upgrade, in fact, for Terran vehicle weapons. So the upgrade advantage is going to be going to Namshar. I think that's going to be uh, something we see continue on as a trend through this game. We'll have a technological and upgrade advantage for Namshar. And both players are going to compete on an economic front and an army front. Alright, and the Roach is trying to get into the natural, but easily getting repelled here. Some very strong base defense here by Kaz. This game is starting to stabilize, but while all this is happening, it looks like Namshar is electing to pull Kaz's army slightly out of position, and this is going to provide an opportunity for Namshar to swing in here and drop some... <sighs> Excuse me. Um, and drop this third base. It looks like he may... Oh, nope, there we go. We've got the, uh, the vials going down, and... One more wave of that should go ahead and kill off the command center, but he may want to choose to deal with this army first. Yes, he's... Yep, boom. Um, looks like this uh, auto turret is going to be running out, and he is reinforcing his army with um, some additional roaches and ravagers. The cyclones and the hellbats pulling away again. Again, this is a really hard base to defend, because you, know, you want your army here to kind of swing in here for the natural, but if you're there, you've got all these openings that a Zerg can exploit. And Zerg are very, very fast. Good choice doing the weekend roach there. And it looks like, here we go, another Zerg siege, and this has not been completely repaired. This is not what you do against a Ravager attack, because those biles do begin to add up. Now we've got the engagement coming in. It looks like Zerg being very smart and pulling right on back, waiting for those biles to come through. And as he retreats, he is going to be dropping biles where he thinks his opponent should be running. And if his opponent doesn't run there, it means that he's not chasing. So either way, forcing the disengage, Namshar is free to do these little pokes, and I love them. It's a very aggressive playstyle, and you have to be like this, because let's face it, roaches are good early game, but because they are so supply heavy, once you get a 200-200 army of them, even if it's supported by Ravagers, it's just not that effective. At that point, you are going to have to switch into like Hydra, Ultra, or some other shenaniganry. And uh, so therefore, we see a lot of trading with this kind of style. So if you're the type of player who likes trading, you might want to consider this. And in any case, we have the Hellbat Cyclone Tank Army with a little Raven Banshee support moving out. It's going to about to be hitting creep. There we go. Now Namshar is aware of it. Now Namshar has not taken this base, and this is not a typical base for Zerg to take. But Kaz wanted to make sure this is a pretty easy entryway um, where, with regard to the creep. The creep is 
thinnest at this spot. And uh, he's not even bothering to kill that much of the creep. He is just going straight for these roaches. And looks like the army of Namshar is going to be hitting from multiple angles. But it's not that ideal because the majority of his force cannot even be attacking. But he is slowly and very methodically getting closer and closer to this Terran army and the mech army is melting as the Zerg gets a good concave. He has been very careful to keep his reinforcements constant. This is some amazing macro production here. Ooh, phone's going off. Some amazing macro production from Namshar. His injects uh, <laughs> must have been phenomenal. We didn't catch them on screen, but uh, you do not have unit after unit pumping like that without some amazing injects and Namshar just showing how it's done this is going to be an attack straight down the barrel of the third and just doesn't look like cause has that many units here that can can deal with this a lot of the tanks not even in position and here we go i think that's twitter guys i'm sorry i'll mute my phone after this ghast and uh yeah some good vials going down and boom there we go destroyed and that base is going to be rebuilt immediately. Meanwhile, there's a little bit of harassment here with some Hellions, but just nowhere near the devastation that Namchar wreaked on cause at that moment. Now we've got five bases, a little four and one in production for Namchar, and I love how he's taking it right along this line. I'm actually going to pause this because he's being slightly aggressive, but I want you guys to realize any attacks late game are going to be on the well let's just call it these clusters of bases like boom 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 um and of course zerg's going to want this base and that's going to allow the terran to get all of these so it's kind of divided right along this this path okay starts here ends here um terran gets the entire left zerg gets the entire right so the creep spread here is actually very defensive even though it's getting him towards the third base of his opponent by getting the creep spread here, he can just fill in all of this, and this is just going to be his his map. I love that choice there by Namshar. Well, this means once he gets a slower army, especially Broodlords, if it goes super, super late game like we're talking, he can park it right here and you know have some units strung all along here, all along here. And this is kind of negligible, just rebuild some of this tech over here, and it, it's no biggie. So that's that's the way I'm thinking about this map, and the way Namshar's playing on it, and I love the way he's, he's choosing to do this. Whereas you see Kaz has taken this base, and now he's taking this base over here, and it gives the Zerg so many places to attack. You can even see this Roach just scouting it. He sees this. I mean, this is so visible to him. So he's just on the constant aggressive, and this is this is playing right into what Namshar does best. And since the tank's are already in position, he's just going to reroute his attack. Look at how many paths are open for him. Hellion's going to get sniped, and that's going to tip cause off a little bit his army is immediately moving we'll see if anything can be done by namshar let's see let's see let's see looks like manchi taking quite a few hits but not gonna die to the bile looks like this base may no not taking quite enough files for that but one more round of them should be able to do it quick and looks like some of these tanks are falling but he's not choosing to kill the entire army he is just going to go straight for this exposed base and let's see if the biles are going to be enough looks like yeah taking that base out immediately and again take a look over here boom vipers are already in position to do an attack on this base but he wouldn't even need to because cause his army is of course going to be defending this base yep not even choosing to attack he did the damage that was all he wanted to do and he's getting ready for the next attack by cause who is moving out looks like this should uh should be an engagement that he's hitting the creep. Boom, Namshar knows about this. Oh, this might just be a creep killing exercise. Small ground army right now for Namshar, but he's still choosing to swing in here. It's not that much for cause until you hit that tank line. But actually, that tank line is super clustered. Hold on. Guys, look at this. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Notice 
it all cause makes a mistake but it's not the mistake that's obvious in just a moment you see he lifts all of these tanks before they get a volley off on the roach ravager hydra army now why does that happen look at how clustered these things are it's only going to take one spell by the viper and boom all of them are out of commission these should be split these three right down here these back here and as the units filter down they'll take volleys from everyone with the way this is going to happen these tanks are going to unseage and just boom immediately abducted because there's no reason to drop the cloud there's no reason to because you already see the units unseaging you already know what they're doing so instead abduct either way some of those tanks are going to die but they would have been far more effective with the method I'm proposing and you would have lost less of them. Okay, so let's watch this again. Boom, abduct. Boom, all these army, all, like half this army should be dead right now. And Kaz realizes that. That's GG, guys. That's what just killed Kaz. Some very small uh, micro things, decision making things, but ultimately culminating into utter defeat guys Kaza is one of my favorite players I love watching him I respected him for many many years up to this day I still respect this man but uh, unfortunately making some mistakes this game best of luck next time man congratulations Namshar I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming thanks for watching like and share this video with your friends please it helps the channel more than you could ever know if you haven't already subscribe to the channel see you next time guys bye bye if you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.